All right, this is uh, Chaplain Bob Walker, Live of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. You know the rest. Uh, just turn your King James Bible to the book of Judges. We're going to read chapter 20, a uh, continuation of what happened after that vile episode. Uh, by no means do I... I don't like what happened here. And by no means am I defending it. But the Bible is full of murder, rape. I mean, even one of King David's sons raped his half-sister. And King David didn't do anything about it. Um, according to the law, if a man raped a woman, the father of the uh, woman had a choice. Either he had to marry her and could never divorce her and was responsible for her. Of course, you know, the father and the daughter would have to agree to this. Or... Since rape was a capital crime, it was punishable by death. Period. What did King David do? Nothing. Now, I'm not sure if half-brothers and sisters could get married. Uh, come to think of it, Abraham married his half-sister. And that was after the law, so I suppose they could have done it. I... I'm not 100% sure. You know, I don't claim to be a Levitical priest and an expert on the law. By no means do I claim this. And just a disclaimer for somebody that, uh, uh, when I said I was an expert on defiling myself with women, that was back, that was a while back. That was like back in the 70s when I didn't uh, believe any of this stuff. Matter of fact, I was an enemy of the Lord and the Lord's people. But uh Lord had to really almost kill me to get my attention. But he get my attention, he did. So uh so let's read Judges 20. I you know, there's a lot of things in the Bible I don't like. And oh, by the way. Uh, there were people that had leaders that had multiple children from different wives and the children often con did uh, what do they call it if you're uh, a child of the king the son of the king I think they call it regicide as in a regent you know royalty uh you know, they would get rid of anybody that was in the way of them getting to the throne. So, you know, those kind of things are in the Bible. Doesn't mean I like them. But, uh, so, all right. So, in Judges 19, uh, the men of the city or town uh, abused the Levite's concubine. She died from her injuries. There's no telling what they did to her. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm, I know what they did to her, but I mean, they might have beat her senseless. Who knows? Uh, but uh, so the Levite cuts her up and 12 pieces and sends her to all the different tribes, to the leaders, I guess, of all the different tribes. And here's the rest of the story. Judges 20 and verse 1. Then all the children of Israel went out, and the congregation was gathered together as one man from Dan, even to Beersheba, with the land of Gilead, unto the Lord in Mizpah. And the chief of all the people even of all the tribes of Israel, presented themselves in the assembly 
of the people of God, 400,000 footmen that drew the sword. Well, that is 400,000 footmen. That's not even the women. That's not even the children. And you're talking back in Judges. Uh, can you imagine the population that they had? So, you know, millions. And they want you to think of few million you-know-whos in the Middle East or all of Israel. I don't think so. Verse 3. Now the children of Benjamin, now remember, uh, they were Benjamites who abused this woman. Now the children of Benjamin heard that the children of Israel were gone up to Mizpah. Then said the children of Israel, Tell us, how was this wickedness? You know, tell us about this evil thing that happened. And the Levite, the husband of the woman that was slain, answered and said, I came to Gibeah, which belongeth to Benjamin, I and my concubine to lodge. And the men of Gibeah rose against me. They rose against me and beset the house round about uh, upon me by night and thought to have slain me and my concubine have they forced that she is dead so they you know they raped her and I took my concubine and cut her in pieces and sent her throughout all the country of the inheritance of Israel for they have committed lewdness and folly in Israel I wanted you to see what they did. Behold, ye are all children of Israel. Give here your advice and counsel. You know? Well, what are we going to do about all this? Verse 8. And all the people arose as one man, saying, We will not any of us go to the, his tent, neither will we any of us turn into his house. But now... This shall be the thing which we will do to Gibeah. We will go up by lot against it. And we will take ten men of a hundred throughout all the land, uh, throughout all the tribes of Israel, and a hundred of a thousand, and a thousand out of ten thousand, to fetch victual for the people that they may do when they come to Gibeah of Benjamin, according to all the folly that they have wrought in Israel. So they're going to take ten percent of all the people, of all the other tribes, right? And all the men of Israel were gathered against the city, knit together as one man. And the tribes of Israel sent men through all the tribe of Benjamin, saying, What wickedness is this that is done among you? So here it is, the other 11 tribes sent representatives saying, you know, hey guys, what's up here? Look at this evil that was done by your, your people. Verse 13. Now therefore deliver us the men, the children of Belial, which are in Gibeah, that we may put them to death and put away evil from Israel. That's a very reasonable thing. You know? Show us who did this, and we're going we're gonna to execute them. But the children of Benjamin would not hearken to the voice of their brethren, the children of Israel. Nope. Oh, we don't care what they did. Hey, they just, you know, they had a couple drinks, and they wanted to have some fun. You know, it's not their fault that this woman died. You know, she just... You know, that's the kind of logic the wicked have. But the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together out of the cities unto Gibeah to go out to battle against the children of Israel. So not only would they not uh, give them, the Isra Israelites, the evildoers, they're gathering an army to protect them. Wow. 
And the children of Benjamin were numbered at that time out of the cities, twenty and six thousand men that drew sword beside the inhabitants of Gibeah, which were numbered seven hundred chosen men. Among all this people were seven hundred chosen men, left-handed. Every one could sling stones at a hair breadth and not miss. Now remember, King David slew Goliath with a stone from his sling. And you got 700 guys here that are uh, crack shots with a sling and not miss. And the men of Israel beside Benjamin were numbered 400,000 men that drew sword. All these were men of war. And the children of Israel rose and went up to the house of God and asked counsel of God and said, which of us shall go up first to the battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. Now, Judah was always first in war. This is why I say that. Judah was the tribe of the kings. And the children of Israel rose up in the morning and encamped against Gibeah. And the men of Israel went out to battle against Benjamin. And the men of Israel put themselves in array to fight against them at Gibeah. And the children of Benjamin came forth out of Gibeah and destroyed down to the ground of the Israelites that day twenty and two thousand men. And the people, the men of Israel, encouraged themselves and set their battle again in array in the place where they put themselves in array the first day. So here it is, Benjamin kicked some rear end and killed 22,000 of Judah. Verse 23. And the children of Israel went up and wept before the Lord at, until even and asked counsel of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up again to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? And the Lord said, Go up against him. And the children of Israel came near against the children of Benjamin the second day, and Benjamin went forth against them out of Gibeah the second day and destroyed down to the ground of the children of Israel again 18,000 men. All these drew the sword. Then all the children of Israel and all the people went up and came unto the house of God and wept and sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until even and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And the children of Israel inquired of the Lord, for the Ark of the Covenant of God was there in those days. And Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, stood before it in those days, saying, Shall I yet again go out to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? Or shall I cease? And the Lord said, Go up, for tomorrow I will deliver them into thine hand. And Israel set liars in wait round about Gibeah. So they're setting up a trap. Liars in wait. You know, they're hiding in the bushes, I guess. And the children of Israel went up against the children of Benjamin on the third day and put themselves in array against Gibeah as at other times. And the children of Benjamin went out against the people and were drawn away from the city. Uh, so I guess what they did was they made it look like, Israel made it look like they were retreating, but they weren't. And I guess on the sides of the road, they had people hiding in the bushes waiting to do an ambush because it's uh when in an ambush it's hard to get the uh the sling throwers to uh you know they can't huh, you don't have time for your sling you gotta use your sword right so it's an ambush that's what an ambush is surprise speed attack you have no time to prepare and if you're in a formation, uh, the guy next to you can help protect your side. 
But if there is no formation, you're on your own. And you get three or four guys chasing after you, you got a problem. Verse 31, And the children of Benjamin went out against the people and were drawn away from the city, and they began to smite of the people and kill as at other times in the highways of which one goeth to the house of God and the other to Gibeah in the field, about 30 men of Israel. And the children of Benjamin said, They are smitten down before us as at the first. So they're thinking, Yeah, we... We kick their rear ends just like we did at the beginning. But the children of Israel said, Let us flee and draw them from the city onto the highways. So, you know, when they're in the city, they can hide behind walls and what have you. They can, you know, they got protection. But out in the open, no, no protection. And all the men of Israel rose up out of their place and put themselves in array at Baal Tamar, there's that word Baal, the false god, Baal Tamar, and the liars in wait of Israel came forth out of their places, even out of the meadows of Gibeah. You know, they're probably lying, to, well, that's what it's called, lying in wait. They were lying on the ground, and, uh, you know, even if flowers are only a foot or so high, it's pretty hard to see people laying in the grass, right? And there came against Gibeah 10,000 chosen men out of all Israel, and the battle was sore, and they knew not that evil was near them. And the Lord smote Benjamin before Israel, and the children of Israel destroyed out of the Benjamites that day 20 and 5,000 and 100 men. All these drew the sword. Oh, I'm sorry. The... Uh, children of Benjamin, verse 36, so the children of Benjamin saw that they were smitten, uh, the Israelites, not Benjamin, Israel. For the men of Israel gave place to the Benjamites, because they trusted unto the liars of weight, which they had set beside Gibeah. So here it is, they're retreating. The children of Israel are retreating before Benjamin. And the liars in wait hasted and rushed upon Gibeah, and liars in wait drew themselves along and smote all the city with the edge of the sword. So here it is, the guys that were in hiding came out, they go to the city, since all the Benjamites uh, were chasing after what they thought was the retreating, defeated army of Israel. But now they got, you know, all these people attacking the undefended city. Now there was an appointed sign between the men of Israel and the liars in wait that they should make a great flame and smoke rise up out of the city. Oh boy. And when the men of Israel retired in the battle, Benjamin began to smite and kill of the men of Israel about 30 persons. For they said, surely they are smitten down before us as in the first battle. But when the flame began to arise up out of the city with a pillar of smoke, the Benjamites looked behind them, and behold, the flame of the city ascended up to heaven. Well, that's not good. Hey, wait a minute. We left, we left the city, and the city looks like it's burning. And when the men of Israel turned again, the men of Benjamin were amazed, for they saw that evil was come upon them. Therefore they turned their backs before the men of Israel unto the way of the wilderness, but the battle overtook them. And they that came out of the cities, they destroyed in the midst of them. So here it is. Benjamin's on the road. They got people in front of them, and they got people in back of them. Verse 43. Thus they enclosed the Benjamites round about and chased them and trod them down with ease over against Gibeah toward the sun rising. And there fell a Benjamin, 18,000 men, all these were men of valor. And they turned and fled toward the wilderness unto the rock of Rimmon. And they gleaned of them in the highways, 5,000 men, and pursued hard after them unto Gibom, Gib, Gidom, and slew 2,000 men of them. So that all that fell that day of Benjamin were 20 and 5,000 men that drew the sword, 
All these were men of valor, but 600 men turned and fled into the wilderness unto the rock of Rimon and abode in the rock of Rimon four months. And the men of Israel turned again upon the children of Benjamin and smote them with the edge of the sword as well the men of every city as the beat as the beast and all that come to hand also they set on fire all the cities that they came to why because they asked benjamin to re you know give us these evil men that murdered this poor woman and they wouldn't do it and the bible tells you to get rid of evildoers why do you think we're in so much trouble today because the church tolerates evildoers. Well, I think it was Edmund Burke, if uh, memory serves me correctly, he says, um, oh, I'll have to look it up, but he says, uh, evil flourishes when good men do nothing. Something to, let me look that up. All right. Uh, Edmund Burke the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Well, there you go. Uh, I don't think there's that many good men today. I really don't. So, all right. Well, there's a lesson to be had here. Benjamin is uh, facing 11 tribes, 11 other tribes. I mean, they're, they're, they got a problem here. Instead of turning over the wicked men, they, they were willing to fight. There are brothers to protect these evil, wicked, uh, evildoers. I mean, really? Really? So, you know. All right, well, this is the end of Judges chapter 20. We will do... 21 because there is a lesson here so all right all blessings praise glory and honor to god the father and his only begotten son jesus who is the christ the lamb slain from the foundation of the world jesus name amen